You know, when I was growing up in the 1970s, we called this player the Million Dollar Man, not because he was a million dollar player, but because an on-ice incident cost him and the Boston Bruins a million dollars. Now, we're going to get into that very soon, but we're going to concentrate on his excellence as a player before we get into that one incident that probably is most remembered for. Now, today we're going to be talking about the very, very uh, talented Dave Forbes, now born Montreal, Quebec. November 16, 1948, uh, played for the Boston Bruins and the Caps in the NHL between 73 and 78, and of course for the Cincinnati Stingers in their last season of the WHA, 78-79. Uh, now, Forbes first came to major prominence uh, for the Shin Maroons of the MMJHL in 67, where he had four goals and four assists for eight points. Now, over four seasons, he was one of the best NCAA uh, players in, uh, in the States at a school called American International University, or IEIU. Over uh, four seasons, he averaged uh, more than a point a game, uh, with seasons of 13, 32, 27, and 30 goals. Now, ironically, he was not drafted. He uh, entered uh, his pro career with the Oklahoma City Blazers, Boston's affiliate of the CHL, with 19 points in 42 games at 72. And, of course, he played with uh, the Boston Braves of the AHL, uh, in that 72 season for the three contests and with the Dayton Gems of the IHL for seven points in 10 games. Now in 73, he played with Dayton yet again, put up some good numbers, uh, 49 points in 49 games and 21 points in 27 games with Boston. Uh, the Braves, of course. Now, his first season with the Bruins was in 74, where he had good rookie numbers with uh, 26 points in 63 games. Now, he was signed as a free agent for Boston, undrafted, probably a big oversight by many, many teams. Now, he made an impact as a defensive-minded forward as he helped guide the Bruins to the finals in 74 during his rookie year. He took a lot of responsibility in shadowing uh, the other big teams in his association. Now, he also made it to the finals with Boston in 77. Now, he played four seasons with Boston until he was claimed by the Capitals in the waiver draft prior to the 78 season. And after playing one season with the Caps, he was released after only playing two games during the 79 season and signed to play for the Stingers of the WHA, where he put up some, some OK numbers, uh, 11 points in 73 games, and including uh, three playoff games. Now, Forbes' is incident, let's get into this very quickly. Forbes was never known as a dirty player, but he was eventually charged charged with aggravated assault in Minneapolis in 75 after butt-ending Henry Bouchard, which was kind of an enforcer uh, skater back in the day, uh, he, he butted in his eye socket in a game against the hometown Minnesota North Stars, leaving Bouchard with limited vision in his right eye. I'm not sure if it scratched a cornea. I don't know if it's a detached rectum, but it was a severe injury. Now, the trial received much publicity. That was highly unusual for an athlete to face criminal charges for assault during the game. But 1975-76, because of the Glenia incident, in Toronto and other uh, situations are getting, seeing more charges. What's called a rough and tumble NHL was being turned against by uh, what they call uh, the uh the peace element, as we say. The trial did end with a hung jury, basically because it was not determined if this was intentional or intent to injure. It may have been intentional, but not intent to injure. And the charges, uh, for some reason, were not refiled. I've never seen the uh, transcript of the uh, the results, but I think it has to do with uh, the possibility of settling out of court, which happened. Forbes was eventually suspended for 10 games by the NHL, which I think his salary was uh, tens of thousands of dollars. And Forbes and the Bruins settled a civil case by paying Bouchard in excess of $1 million for the injury results. Now, I think $1 million in uh, 1975 money would be compared to 5 or $7 million now. So again, it was a kind of a civil judgment which uh, removed uh, the criminal uh, judgment. So, uh, like I said, very, I'm not going to say black eye in uh, pro hockey history because that would be too facetious, but it was kind of interesting to see someone like this, strictly a defensive forward, rarely would take uh, a penalty unless he had to. Most of his uh, penalty numbers were only uh, high with uh, Washington in that season in 78. Now, final NHL totals, 128 points in 363 games, including 64 uh, goals, and uh, scored only one playoff game 
uh, one playoff goal in 35 games with Boston, and that came in 1976. And um, his playoff totals uh, were more defensive. He played 16 games in the Bruins' playoff run in 74 with only two assists, and 77 only one assist in 14 games. Like I said, rarely will take a penalty. WHA totals, six goals, five assists for 11 points in 73 games, and one assist uh, in... Uh, one assist in three playoff games. Now uh, there is a Sports Illustrated article on the uh, the non decision as Sports Illustrated call it in their July 28, 1975 edition. If you like to uh, uh, ch- check check it out again, it's uh, quite quite an interesting story because again uh, you know you would expect a situation like that would occur, but it did. So if you like what we're doing here with the Vintage Financial Podcast, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. Requests are all all is encouraged and considered and if you like what we're doing uh, tell your friends and if you don't like what we're doing well don't tell anybody have a good day bye